Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Walker Ford in super sunny Clearwater, Florida. And guess what? We have the original pony car that keeps bringing that high horsepower performance. This is it. This is a 2022 Ford Mustang, but this is not, as you can see, your regular Mustang. This is the mighty Mach 1. But before we get into this rear wheel drive, tire shredding, V8 powered pony car, let's talk about what's going on here. There's a lot of change happening in the auto industry currently as we speak. EVs are becoming more and more popular and are becoming more available. This vehicle, its name, the Mustang, going all the way back to 1965. Technically, it's 64 and a half if you were to be talking to a Mustang aficionado, but you know what? Over the years, it's for the most part stayed true to its name, that high performance muscle car. Now, in 1974, things got a little sketchy. Uh, they came out with the Mustang II, which really wasn't much of what the original was all about. But remember, as the history books tell us, in the late 70s, the Fox Body Mustang came to be. And from there on out, it was nothing but good old days worth of performance. Now, they're gonna be changing and redesigning the Mustang. I'm sure a lot, a lot of people out there have seen the photos all over the interwebs with changes to the front, changes to the whole body and the chassis, and of course, what's gonna be powering it. Now, Mach 1, the name has come, the, the name has gone. Obviously, the name made a mighty return from the early 2000s, but is it gonna stick around for this new Mustang? Are they gonna simplify the lineup and maybe just produce a Mustang GT and that's it? Nobody knows for certain, but what I wanna find out is we have this fighter jet gray Mach 1 here. Is it now, is now the time to finally put your money where your mouth is? You've been talking about getting a muscle car for yourself. Is this the one to get? before they're all gone. So let's find out, is it now or never, to buy a Mach 1 before they disappear, potentially forever. Let's go ahead and find out. Right off the bat, the color. When they came out with the Mach 1, they came out with this fighter jet gray. It was only supposed to be for the top Mach 1 trim with the handling package, but so many people fell in love with it that they decided to put it on the standard Mach 1. At the front of the business, you're gonna see a little bit of a mixed salad going on. You got your traditional setup on your headlight design with your tri-bar LED. You got your LED projector uh, head, headlight in there. And then as you work your way down, there are some major unique differences. The Mach 1, this whole area from one corner to the other is unique to the Mach 1. So we have full functional corner air intakes. I like the way they went with this flat metallic gunmetal gray, you'll notice that the splitter actually curves up a little bit, a little bit to kick that air up and around the fender well, help give us some downforce. No actual dive plane or canard like you would find on a ZL11LE, but just this little addition to the kind of kick up gives us some extra downforce and directing that airflow. Now, as we come across the front, this is a front grille, like I said, that may disappear forever. This grille is unique to the Mach 1. So you have your gunmetal metallic gray finish on the Pony, going all the way back to 1964 and a half. I like the way they brought that same finish all the way around the perimeter. Some gloss black, but fully functional. And these plates are removable. So if you're taking it to the track, because this is supposed to be the most track worthy coyote powered Mustang ever. You remove those plates to bring a little bit extra airflow. On the downside, you do have more gloss black. I wish they would have kept the same design. So I am gonna zonk this, actually give it a half zonk. I like the way it's functional, but it would have been cool to have the same exact grill design, both up top and down below. And then you'll notice the massive front splitter. This thing is gonna act like a snow shovel and just scoop, not snow, but gobs of air into that lower opening and it's gonna give us downforce and it's gonna stop air from going underneath this Mustang. Now when we get up onto the hood, standard hood, no shaker hood, 
not even a unique hood. This is the same hood you find on a Mustang EcoBoost, Mustang GT, but of course you have that beautiful Mach 1 stripe, that flat metallic black with the satin, the Mach 1 name, and I'm digging the orange pinstriping. It really works on this particular Mach 1. Now when we come around the bend, of course we have a unique wheel and tire setup. So these are gonna be your standard 19 inch wheels. If you go to the handling package, those are 20 inch wheels, but I do like that satin gray finish, a little bit of polished aluminum all the way around. And just like Halloween, we got these bright orange jack-o-lantern size Brembo caliper six piston are gonna clamp down on those rotors that are over 15 inches in diameter. And they're gonna freaking make this thing stop on a dime and give everybody change. You do have the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, give you the stick, give you the grip, but also give you durability. Up front, we have 255s, but wait until we get to the rear. We do have a little bit more rubber to meet the road. And of course, they work the suspension all four corners. You're gonna get an engine oil cooler, transmission cooler, and diff cooler, taken right from the Shelby GT350. And of course, remember the big news is you could have a six-speed Tremec right from the GT350 or a 10-speed automatic. Let's continue our journey. Down the side, I do like the tasteful badging, especially the way it's raised off of the body, off the fender with the black, that gray. You got your Mach 1 stripe all the way down towards the rear of the vehicle. Your standard side sill extension, just like any other Mustang. Color match door handles, gunmetal flat gray on your mirror caps. And then that silhouette. Remember, new design is coming. I wonder what that shape is gonna be, but this is a known factor. So like I said, it's now or kind of never to get one of these. Work your way towards the rear. Speaking of the rear, up front you had 255s. Back here, you got 275s. Now one of the big zonks, especially for a performance car, is I don't like that floating rear caliper. That should be a Brembo setup, just like up front, but I'm glad that they put the orange on it. It just, that, caliper does not scream performance and it's not going to give you the same braking capability but you got 275 on the width so a little bit more rubber to meet the road of course you got a limited slip diff that torsion limited slip diff and a diff cooler to keep the temperatures down you'll notice the rear splat area the spat comes down that's from the gt350 that's going to help direct the airflow and then coming around the back on your standard mach 1 you do get a very tasteful gunmetal metallic gray trunklet spoiler. It goes all the way acro across from one end to the other, gives you the downforce, gives you a unique look. Of course, you're gonna get your tri-bar taillights, your Mach 1 badge with a little bit of gloss black, and then as we go all the way down, you're gonna get the same rear diffuser that we have on the GT500. Nice large exhaust, different than the GT500's exhaust. This is unique to the Mach 1, slash cut, they're staggered, and they're definitely gonna let out a roar. Speaking of roar, let's pop the hood on our 2022 Mach 1 and see what's powering it. All right, guys, we got the hood popped now. Remember how we're talking about now or never? Of course I'm talking about buying one of these brand new. And here's a little lesson that some people are learning. They should have got a 2021, and here's why. Underneath the hood, yes, we do have the Coyote V8, but we got less horsepower, but I'll get to that in a second. We have that massive strut tower brace with the Mach 1 badge on it. It looks like a girder right from the Golden Gate Bridge. Underneath that massive bracing is going to be the intake manifold off of a GT350 and the open air box. So you're getting some extra goodies from the GT350, but here's the bummer. For 2022, less power. 470 horsepower, 410 pound-feet of torque. That's 10 less on both sides compared to last year. You can get your six-speed automatic. This one does have a 10, excuse me, six-speed manual. This one does have a 10-speed automatic. Zero to 60 with the auto, four seconds flat. Quarter mile is 12.6 seconds at 115 miles an hour. Top speed is 168 miles per hour. Compared to the Challenger, this thing is a lightweight. It comes in at 3,844 pounds. MPGs, you're not gonna like this. 
It's gonna be 14 in the city, 22 on the highway, but that's not what this car is about. What it's about is performance, and what you're getting are the adjustable camber plates from the GT350 and the GT500. You're gonna have that diff cooler, the larger brakes, and of course, the rear subframe with stiffer bushings and setup like the GT350. But nice to see that they don't have a stupid engine cover on here like they have on the Mustang GT. I could see that intake plenum with its runners. You got the Power by Ford logos on both sides. And of course, you got the larger throttle body taken right from the GT350. Remember, the throttle body is what's gonna open and close to suck that air down into that intake plenum. But you know what? Looking at this engine's cool, and you're gonna wanna look at it when you buy one. But let's go ahead, let's fire it up and have a little bit of an eargasm with our Mach 1. guys we're inside what could be one of the last Mach 1's ever available I know you're saying to yourself well Joe I've been wanting one of these I want to get one of my own pony car muscle cars I've been really trying to give my kids the best now that they're grown up I'm ready to treat myself because I did my best even when they were annoying and a pain in the butt I still stayed true to them but how much is this Mach 1 muscle car from Ford? Very good question. And I truly believe you do deserve to treat yourself. MSRP for the way that this one is optioned is right at $61,000. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. Now, I know many people are gonna say, well, Joe, the door panels are dated. Well, duh, they've been around since 2015. My big zonk is not that they're dated, it's that I wish there was some orange stitching there instead of the white contrast stitching. Because of the orange on the exterior, it would have been nice to have those touches brought inside. I think another thing would have been some dark chrome finish rather than that shiny chrome finish on the door handle and the handle to open the door. You still get a soft armrest. Door pocket, it's a medium, mild to medium size. So you're looking at two jelly glazed donuts from Dunkin' Donuts and a cup of coffee to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, let me show you some of the Mach 1 specifics that you're going to get. You're going to get this Mach 1 chassis number plate. Those are only reserved usually for the Shelbys. They decided to bring it to the Mach 1. This finish on the dash is Mach 1 specific. You are going to get the performance gauges, both oil pressure and vacuum. It would have been nice to have a voltmeter or something instead of the vacuum, but it is nice to have those extra gauges. You got the B&O sound system, the same eight inch infotainment system with the same SYNC 3. It works fine. I don't need a 22 inch screen in my muscle car. So let me know how you feel about the screen in this one. You are gonna get three stages of heated seats and three stages of ventilated seats, which is real nice. And you got the P51 fighter plane toggle switches for your modes and everything else, an aluminum start stop button. You got your Twinkie holder for when you blow the doors off the competition to give to them. USB A, there's your A10. Your A10 10 speed automatic. You can also get a six speed manual. This thing fires off shifts just as fast as a machine gun fires on a P51 World War II fighter plane. I like the way it's got that nice silver finish to it and the shift boot with the stitching, but all this white stitching, wouldn't you agree that the orange would have worked a lot better? You got a good old fashioned mechanical e-brake. My Camaro ZL11LE doesn't even have that. Two cup holders, Mustang key fob. Here's another place it would have been nice for it to say Mach 1, but you could do a remote start as you're coming out of the post office and scare the hell out of everybody. Soft touch with more of that stitching. Would have been nice if it was orange. Open it up. 
USB-A, and Lori was telling me that you got about enough room for three My Little Ponies. Very popular toy for boys and girls in the 1980s. Three My Little Ponies, and you know what? It's a good place to keep them because they're going up in value. Seats, soft leather, stitching. There's the only orange. This is it. The stitching would have been spot on the money, but I do like the way they did everything down the center. Nice salt bol bolstering. You have power adjustments on the bottom for the passenger and the driver. My zonk is they got manual controls for the back. Now, I know you might say, well, Joe, what about when I get want to get in the back seat? Well, what do you think you do in a car that has electric seats? You move the buttons. You do have a lever, but watch. When I move it, this is as far forward as it goes. That means you got to come down here and do this. So do you see my dilemma, my zonk dilemma? But the nice thing is you have soft material for the rear seat passengers. Nobody over five foot eight would I want to put back here, unless you really want to punish the hell out of them. But we put the seat back. I got plenty of room in here. Second to the Challenger. Challenger has more front seat and rear seat passenger room, but this is second place in front of the Camaro. But why don't you come over here? I got 12 inches of muscle car display I want to show you. Come right, on guys, over. business time behind the wheel of the Mach 1. Now you do get these special Mach 1 silk plates, but they left the shipping film over them so that if anybody gets in and out of this Mach 1 to see if it's the pony car they want to take home, it won't get scratched. Pedal box, good size. You got an aluminum brake and throttle pedal. The zonk is you got a plastic deb pedal. That would have been nice to have that be aluminum. There is uh, the control for the seat. There are the controls for the seat, just like on the passenger side. No electric assist on the back on the driver's side, which is really kind of dumb, but you do get three memory seat settings for just the bottom. Steering wheel. It would have been nice if they gave me some Mach 1 goodness. It's the same exact Mustang steering wheel. It feels good when you're holding on to it, but it would have been nice to have like a Mach 1 horn button or something like that. All flat black on the buttons. You do have paddles on the back of the steering wheel to go up and down that 10 speed automatic transmission yourself. And then I promised you 12 inches. There's your 12 inches. 12 inch digital display. It's got a classic style to it with obviously modern technological touches. You could go through the different modes. Right now we're in normal. There's Sport Plus. And you can see how the tech changes. Yes, I know the vehicle is on. Thank you, Ford. They're watching right now. Then you could go into track, only for track use. Nice large tachometer. You got your G meter, and then you could scroll through other information with the temperatures and whatnot. So very nice to have those different settings on the dash. I'm six feet tall, plenty of headroom. Now we're not gonna get into the trunk because I don't give a damn about the trunk. If you wanna watch more in-depth details, watch one of my other Mustang reviews, but if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle in this muscle car Mach 1. All right, guys, we're in this 2022 Mach 1. We're rolling out of Walker Ford. You know what we're gonna have to do, right? We gotta do it. If you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, here we go, 10 speed drops down, and we are off. There's those fast shifts. Really, really nice. It's almost like when this thing shifts, with authority, it feels like you're getting kicked in the back of the head by a horse. That's the kind of authority each gear brings. Just like I said, they fire off so quickly, it's like a machine gun from a P-51 Mustang. Now, one of the things that I do like about the Mach 1 compared to the Camaro or even the Challenger is the way it drives. Uh, you, you got that nice medium right in the middle amount of room on the interior not too tight but not like you're sitting in a bathtub uh like in the challenger which you know some people like because it gives you more room but going into the next generation of the mustang it's going to be very interesting to see what ford's going to do obviously they've already said they're going to keep the v8 so we know that but how will it be offered what kind of horsepower options and then of course what kind of extra trim options are they going to have? I really believe that the Mach 1 is not going to be available on the new Mustang when it comes out. Obviously, we got to wait and see. You could play the Russian roulette game and see what's going to happen, or you could finally plop your money down and get yourself 
the muscle car that you've been dreaming of. All right, guys, lights green. We're gonna get her out onto the highway and stretch her legs in this Mach 1. I think for a lot of people, and let me know how you still feel about this, they're still hung up that you can't even get a shaker hood, even as an option. And I think that would have been one of those big differentiators to help separate it physically besides just a stripe kit on the hood. But you know what? Arthra, here we go. Nice. Look how fast those shifts are. That's the thing that blows my mind about this 10-speed automatic. And if you're gonna take this to the drag strip, that's what you want. You want consistency. But if you wanna have the ultimate feel and that ultimate connection with you and this horse, you definitely wanna go with the manual because it's the Tremec six speed out of the Shelby GT350 and GT350R. But seats are comfy. If you want more bolstering, you could go with the Recaros, which what's nice about the Recaros in the Mach 1 is they're all leather compared to a Shelby GT350 where it is a kind of like cloth slash Alcantara material. Um, considering the difference of how they're gonna wear, especially if you do drive this every day, you'll get better wear from the leather interior. But let's see how this Mach 1 handles because remember, it does have some differences between this and the rest of the Mustang lineup. All right, guys, here we go from a roll. Andra, here we go. Drops down on those massive pumpkin orange Brembos. Round and round and round we go. Here we go. Nice. <laughs> I love this part right here. Woo! It's like a roller coaster ride. That's the best part is that not only do you get to have that heritage of the Mach 1, you got a sound that you'll hear in your dreams for the rest of your life. And then basically you have a roller coaster ride that when you go on throttle, this thing puts you up and it giddy ups and goes. That's what you want. Nice naturally aspirated power. I know there's a lot of people out there saying, I wish I would have got a brand new Shelby. Well, guess what? If you want a brand new Mustang, these Mach 1s, you're gonna say the same thing to yourself if you want one and you don't get it now because they're not sticking around forever. I'll tell you that right now. On a throttle, here we go. absolutely phenomenal that a coyote power mustang performs like this but let's be honest it's not the same as the sound of that voodoo engine that will go down in history as one of the greats of all time one more time for you definitely one more time for me you deserve it Andra, here we go Nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's all about. It's the experience. Yes, an EV can go faster potentially than this car. What would he freaking do? But you know what? We got to bring this back to Walker Ford. I know Frank Walker wants this back. He thinks I'm taking it home with me, but we'll get back to Walker Ford and wrap this up. So I'll see you in a Mustang minute. All right, guys, it's been an on throttle muscle Mustang kind of day here from Walker Ford. Definitely want to thank Frank Walker, Weston Walker, Tracy, Austin, the whole crew getting us access to probably one of their last Mach 1s that they're going to have available. It's going to be interesting to see what is Ford going to do, especially with the redesign. But like I said, let me know what you think. Is it now or never to buy one of these Mustangs, especially in this trim and this setup? Put your comments in that section down below. But until we meet another day on another on throttle exciting drive, if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. We got to give it up to the muscle behind the lens. Lori working that camera like a champ. Show her some love in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.